you hear me loud and clear? Great, very good. Well, um, this morning I thought, um, as we all are in here together, how about I do something a little bit different? Uh, I really love doing it because I think I'm really good at it. Um, you can judge that, you can let me know later, but, but, but use kind words, okay? Because um, we, we try and do kind things here, okay? Um, we, we try and follow what Christ has asked us to do, is be loving and kind, even though when things get really hard, and even though if you don't like something. Um, so, I think I'm pretty good at painting, okay? My wife probably will disagree, and my kids might as well. Um, you don't, thanks, Jeremiah, you are a trooper, well done, mate. Um, but I thought, I want to share a little bit with you and just give, just whet your appetite this morning because as a church, um, I felt God's really leading me to, to introduce the book of James to you. Now, how many of you have actually read the book of James? How many of you have actually studied the book of James? Okay, there's a difference there. You can read a book, but you can study the book as well. So we're going to study the book of James in the next few weeks um, coming ahead. Um, and I'm going to try my best in order to share what God's put on my heart to you. But in order to do that, I thought, let's just better our appetite a bit. So are you ready to see my painting? Yes. Great, okay, now this is so much fun, because uh, that was not a good yay. Are you ready to see my painting? Yes. Come on. Run. <laughs> okay, let's see. Not great, is it? It's, it's, everyone's still watching the drop. They were like, what is that? Um, anyways, is, is it okay? Is it right? Thanks, thanks, guys. You, you, you can say that. And, We'll chat later. It's fine. Um, I, I promise I haven't bribed them. They're just saying what they like to say sometimes, uh, which is fine. Now, how many of you have seen this film called Remember the Titans? Long time ago. Um, it's all about um, American soccer, basically, and this coach who goes in there. It's a Christian guy. He goes into this, into this environment where the teams were not really doing the stuff that they should be doing. They were really disorientated. They were not united. They were just doing their own stuff. And that, as a team, they were not doing well. He comes in and he prays about that team. He feels God's led him there, even though it was really, really hard. And he carries on. And you see in that film how he actually trains them. It's incredible. If you ever get hold of that film, I would definitely watch it once. Just have a go. There's a bit of um, bits and bobs that you might say, oh, that's just, this is ridiculous. But just, just stay on, catch on, watch the film, and see the theme behind it. I think it's pretty, pretty good. It tells us a lot about perseverance, that film. And today, what the puppets were sharing was about perseverance as well. But where do you need to persevere? During trials. And when we read James chapter verses from 2 till 4, it's just very briefly, it tells a little bit about it. Now, before I go into my painting, I'm just going to ask you a question, all of you, okay? Have you ever found that you have tried to do something and it's not worked the way you want to do it? Anyone? Adults? Do you know, I found that because I, in my, old, in my old house, I tried to put a shelf up. Um, <laughs> And it was a floating shelf. Now, I have got to tell you this, I do not like them anymore. <laughs> because I tried my best, and it was wonky. Um, and then I tried to tell myself, that's perfectly fine. You know, this is how shelves should look. And glass should just tilt down and come down. But no. Um, and in order to make it fine, I then had to get a bracket. that had to stick underneath it so that it could actually sit on it. That's why I'm not good at uh, DIY. And that's why Andy uh, came and helped us a lot. Uh, and he will carry on hopefully helping us. Um, but I, I thought it was, it was, I wanted to have a go. I wanted to have a try. Even though I knew it might not work out the way I wanted to go. I had the tools. I thought I could do it. But when I put it up, when I looked at it, I thought, hmm, that's not good. And sometimes we tell ourselves that. Sometimes you say, okay, do you know what? I'm not good enough. I'm not doing the things I should be doing. Or I've done this and it's not good. But God doesn't see that. God sees your heart. He sees what's going on inside. And if there's something that you have done for him, he wants to bless it. He wants to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. So this morning, what you need to be looking at is the yellow boxes. 
And the idea is, as I paint, words should pop up. OK? So that's the big T there, as you can see. What does that say? Yes. Trials, very good. Do you know what? I was painting the other day, and um, by mistake, I put trails. Um, <laughs> that's not meant to be there. But I'm telling you a secret. Just, you can just, afterwards, just applaud for the things I've done here, OK? Anyways, how many of you are going through trials today? How many of you are? Yeah, a few of us? Great, good to see hands, because I think then we can work together. We can help each other out. We all go through trials in our life. And sometimes, when we go through trials, what we really need to do is we need to focus on something. And that is the linchpin of everything that I'm talking about this morning. We need to focus on this guy, OK? Like I said, I'm very good at painting. The words that pop up is <coughs> Jesus. In our trials, there are going to be times when we're going to think, oh, we can do it in our own strength. Okay? In our trials, sometimes we're going to feel that actually we can defeat this. We can do it in our own strength. But what the Bible really tells us, in everything, in every situation, look up to God. In trials, look up to God. And then this thing happens quite a lot. Now, children, have you ever felt that mummy and daddy have told you not to put the hand into that sweet jar and take the extra sweet, and you might have fell, fallen into that and taken it? Have you ever done that? I've done that quite a lot. And the word that we call that is... In our lives, James tells us there are going to be trials and there are going to be temptations. But what we really need to be thinking about in those trials, in those temptations, is what are we going to do about them? As we're going to look into this whole book of James, I'm hoping and I'm praying that we will lynch and we'll put everything that we have, everything that we've got on this guy here. We will look up to him for his wisdom. We'll look into the word. We'll dive into it. We'll explore it a little bit more. And my prayer is that in trials and temptations, we will remember to focus on Jesus. But James is also a really, really fun book. Now, this is where I need your help, OK? So I'm just going to do this. What is that? A circle, OK? Great. What are these? Eyes and eyeballs. Okay, and what is that? What's missing? A mouth. And? Yes. yes. Can you go and find them for me? Go on. They're somewhere in here. Go. They're, they're printed pictures of ears and mouth. Have a look around the chairs. Carefully. Look at here. Oh, well done. That's brilliant. Yay. Well done, everyone. That was great. So look at this. It's wonderful, isn't it? Absolutely in proportion. Don't, don't judge that. It's fine. Um, James also tells us something else. He tells us, and let me read it for us, okay? Verses 2 onwards. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of any kind, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance, perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Verses 2 till 4. 
Faith develops perseverance. In trials, in temptations, our faith in God develops, our, our growing with Him. In trials, in temptations, whatever you're facing today, as long as you focus on Jesus and what He's done for you, He will help you with that. He'll help you overcome that. He'll help you deal with that in a much better, in a much mature way, like the word says. Because Jesus didn't say dead. He's going to draw an arrow there. Because three days later, the Bible says that he rose again. He rose from the dead. He defeated death. So he's here with us. He's alive with us. He's amongst us. His spirit is amongst us. So in times when you feel that actually I can't go on, in times when you feel that temptations are too big, I might fall into that trap, focus on Christ. Focus on what he's done for you and for me. Try and develop that perseverance. Try and develop yourself in growing more and more in faith with Christ. Because James, right in the front, right at the beginning, says, James, a servant of God. We all are called to be servants of God. What are we doing with our lives today really does matter. Because God is looking up to you and saying, I've given you all these talents, I've given you all these gifts, how are you using them for God? So my prayer is that we will do these things as I have shared. The reason why I've drawn this, and it's not very good, I know that, <laughs> but the reason why I've drawn this, James also tells us something else, really, really interesting. It talks about listening and doing. So as you're gonna be reading James, and I hope and I pray, that you will go home and read the whole book of James. Only five chapters, not, not long at all. But that shouldn't be the reason why you should be reading a book. You should be willing to read the book anyways, even if you're talking of Psalms or anything else. James also talks about listening and doing. We listen with our ears. Then we use our hands to do things. He's saying in everything that we try and do, we need to make sure that we're doing it for Jesus. And as we look into this a bit more in the next few weeks and months ahead, my prayer is, as chapter 4 reminds us very clearly, that we all will submit ourselves to God. And when we submit ourselves to God, in these things that can sometimes come and take us off track, He'll help us realign it. So, you might be facing something today that I don't know. You might want to share it with someone here whom you trust. You might want to share it with me later on. I'll happily sit down and pray with you. Meet with you for a coffee over this week. So please just let me know if that can, that's something I can do. You might be facing something today that we don't know, but God knows. So what we're going to do is we're going to go launch into our prayer activity. And that is, I'm going to give you all, um, or some of the children are going to come and give you all some post-it notes. There's some pens in the front here. If you've got a pen, great. If you don't, that, they'll be coming out as well. The idea is, I want you to write down whatever trials you're going through, whatever temptations you're facing today. It's not between you and me, I'm not gonna be reading it, it's between you and God. Write it down, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it on that cross there. Because what we're trying to do is we're saying to God, we wanna submit ourselves to you, because we know we can't do it on our own, but you can help us get through this. So, children, are you happy to be my helpers? Yeah. Excellent helpers. Do you want to ask you do that? And do you want to do some as well? Yes, do you want to give some out? There you go. Boys, do you want to give some out? Do you want to relax? That's fine. It's all right. uh, do you want to, do you want to give some out? And we've got some pens over there. The mom's going to come and give them out as well. Write down your trials. Write down what you're going through today. It's not, between, not for me to read, but you can share that with me later if you would like to. And then go onto the cross and stick it. Say a prayer that God, please help me in this that I'm facing, and he will.